Here are one quick biochemistry basics here. Let's talk about splicing. The transcription of eukaryotic gene results in the formation of pre-mRNA. The pre-mRNA have coding sequence and the non-coding sequence. The coding sequence are known as the exons while the non-coding sequence are known as the introns. Splicing is a phenomenon in which introns are removed and the exons are joined together to form a mature mRNA. Before understanding how the splicing works, following are the terms that you should know. The part of intron towards the phi dash end is known as the phi dash splice site. The part of intron towards the 3 dash end is known as the 3 dash splice site. The exon towards the phi dash end is known as the phi dash exon, and the exon towards the 3 dash end is known as the 3 dash exon. The basic mechanism of splicing is simple. The phosphodiester bond between exon and intron at the 5' splice site is first broken and the 3' hydroxyl group of the phi dash exon reacts with the 3' splice site to complete the reaction. Now depending on the sequence and the way in which splicing occurs, the introns are classified into two types, group 1 introns and group 2 introns. Let's see the splicing mechanism of group 1 introns. The group 1 intron folds itself in such a way that it can hold a guanine nucleotide. The guanine nucleotide is in its ribose form. The 3 OH group of the guanine nucleotide then reacts with the 5' splice site and the guanine nucleotide finally attaches itself at the phi dash end of the intron. This attachment of guanine nucleotide makes the 3 OH end of the phi dash exon free. The 3 OH group of the exon then reacts with the 3' splice site. This joins the two exon and releases the intron, completing the splicing reaction. This splicing mechanism is also known as self-splicing mechanism as no other proteins are involved. Let's say the splicing mechanism of group 2 introns. The splicing of group 2 introns can either occur by self-splicing mechanism or with the help of other proteins and RNA known as the spliceosome complex. Self-splicing of group 2 introns the group 2 introns have an adenine residue present in its sequence. Remember, the group 1 intron uses a free guanine nucleotide for the reaction, but this is not a case in group 2 intron. It uses adenine which is present in the sequence itself. The 2-OH group of the adenine reacts with the 5-splice site and forms a loop-like structure known as the lariate. This reaction makes the 3-OH group of the 5-exon free. The 3-OH group of the exon then reacts with the 3-splice site, which releases the intron and completes the splicing mechanism. Now, besides self-splicing mechanism, the splicing of group 2 introns can also be mediated by other proteins and RNA, which is known as the spliceosome. This complex consist of 150 proteins and 5 RNAs known as small nuclear RNA or SNRNAs. These 5 SNRNAs are designated as U1, U2, U4, U5 and U6. Each of them can be 100 to 300 nucleotides long and are attached to several other proteins. These RNA protein complex is termed as SNRNPs or SNRPs, small nuclear ribonuclear proteins, and all of them together carries out splicing reaction. Let's see the splicing mechanism carried out by the spliceosome. In the first step, the SNRNP U1 
binds the phi dash splice site. Next, U2AF, also known as U2 auxiliary factor, binds the 3 dash splice site. U2AF further helps other protein, known as branch point binding protein, to bind the branch site. The branch point binding protein is further displaced by U2 SNRNP at the branch site. When U2 binds the adenine at the branch site, the adenine bulges out. Next, U2AF is released and U2 SNRNP further recruits U5, U4 and U6 SNRNP. The U6 SNRNP tries to occupy U1, hence U1 is released. The U6 then tries to interact with U2. During this interaction, U4 is released. The interaction between U6 and U2 triggers two reaction. First, there is a formation of loop or the lariat by phi dash splice site and the adenine at the branch site. And second, there is a reaction between phi dash splice site and 3 dash splice site completing the splicing reaction.